And the next speaker is Frank Weber from PSI, FLS, Fuzzy Logic and Neurosysteme. And he speaks about optical inspection and quality control with AI-based software. Please. Thank you. Okay, so here is my presentation. Title, Optical Inspection Quality Control with AI-based software, as already mentioned. Maybe just a small word to myself. I'm a project manager at the PSI FLS Fuzzy Logic Neural Systems GmbH in, uh, in Dortmund. And uh, PSI is a, is, a, is a group with uh, more than 2,000 employees all, all around the world and a uh, worldwide customer base. And uh, we have 16 national and 15 international locations. Yeah, and the PSI FLS Fuzzy Logic and Neural Systems GmbH is a part of the PSI group since 2008, as we have been founded in 1992. And we have currently offices in Dortmund, Aschaffenburg and Munich. So we have installations worldwide, as you see on the world map behind of this screen. So everywhere where you see a, a country in green, we have made installations, not only by the PSI group itself, but also as well for the PSI FLS on its own. Yeah, and we are worldwide partner for BMW, Continental and Volkswagen not only in the field of image recognition and uh, computer vision, but also by the means of uh, optimization of uh, car flows and, and other things. So we are not only dealing with machine vision, but we use the same technologies to integrate this uh, in, in various fields. Okay, before we come to our, let's say, application examples, I would like to have a little uh, turnaround and talk about uh, artificial intelligence and what we understand and what is special about our approach here. So artificial intelligence, probably all of us know by now. Yeah? We have speech assistants, we have our smartphones that we can talk to, we have assistants at home that we can talk to, to to switch on light and off, something like this. Yeah, And this is more or less all linked together to, to something and the impression that all people think, okay, behind this there's a neural network. This is coming from new, uh, uh, movies and uh, common literature, something like this. But in fact, it's not only neural networks. Artificial intelligence is a wider field. And it's not only data that we need to uh, achieve the, the possibility to, to have uh, machine vision and artificial intelligence systems, but we need labeled data. Yeah? So we at PSI FLS, we present a stack of uh, AI functionalities of AI software that enables you to, uh, uh, to help you to label your data to get better results. And we also provide a stack of AI software and AI algorithms that can be applied to that data. Yeah, just to summarize once again, so it's not only like most people think it's not only neural networks, it's a, 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 a huge stack of, uh, of, of techniques and algorithms, pattern recognition, gradient boosting, yeah, classical and enhanced fuzzy logic, that's something where we originally came from. Yeah? But in the end, we have been using all these techniques and uh, methods for more than 20 years now. Okay, so within the PSI group, uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, f and &E thing here for something we call industrial intelligence, which in fact is applying AI methods to industrial problems and industrial tasks. And we as uh, PSI FLS are the leading group within the PSI itself for this uh, industrial intelligence group. And if there is further interest, yeah, you see the link here and probably also the barcode. But this is also available in the yeah, summary and the PDF after, after the presentation. Okay, what I would like to show you today are some examples of application that we made in the tire industry, tire building industry, for one of our main customers. And uh, these are mostly uh, things where we do quality control on the finally built tire before it is developed and shipped to the customer. And one thing we are doing here is a, what we call a curved upside down inspection of a tire with a fuzzy DOT pattern search and a fuzzy color stripe recognition. So what does it mean if a tire is curved upside down? I don't know how familiar you are with uh, how a tire is built, 
But as a final step, you take uh, what they call a green tire and put it into a mold and in the end bake it for 20 or 25 minutes. And the problem is if you turn it the wrong way into the mold, it looks like a good tire, but in effect it's uh, yeah, something you can't use from the quality point because it's cured upside down, the wrong way. Yeah, and there are two ways that you can probably recognize that the tire has been cured upside down. One is by the color stripes, because most likely the color stripes will be on the wrong side if you turn the tire in the wrong way. And the other is uh, by recognizing the weak number imprint, which is only on one side of the tire. So what we have is a system that is scanning the tire by passing by on a conveyor. So this is done with a line scan camera with a light source underneath. So this, in the end, uh, we, we integrate the image from the line scan camera. And by the end, we get this image, uh, which looks like the tire is on a, on a white plate, something like. And what we do in the first step is uh, more or less we unroll the tire, like cutting it off and, and unrolling it completely. And then we look for the imprint of the DOT label, which is for Department of Transportation, so thanks to the uh, US Ministry here that every tire has this imprint. And then the, uh, the, the knowledge is that near to this DOT imprint, we expect to have the uh, week number of the production, so week number and year of the production of the tire. So if we find this week number, everything is fine, the tire is most likely okay. If we do not find this imprint, like in the lower image visible, yeah, the tire has been cured upside down and has to be rejected by the system. Okay, the second check, and I will go on how this is working internally uh, a little later, is about the color stripes. Yeah? You can just imagine, okay, the, the upside of the tire is uh, defined by the way where the barcode label or a barcode label is applied to the tire. And just by, if you place the label of the barcode on the wrong side and then turn it upside down, you will see probably the, the DOT on the correct side, but still the color stripes will be on the wrong side. So then they will be upside down. And that is something we do like, we, we check for the position of the color stripes as well. Are they on the expected position or are they on a non-expected uh, uh, position? I will come to this uh, application a little later because we also use the uh, recognition of the color stripes for identifying and checking the quality of the, of the tires and the production flow. Okay. Being able to read or to detect the weak stamp number on the tire clearly comes with another application that can be imagined and which is more or less something that we are asked for all the time because the next thing would be to actually read the weak stamp imprint. Yeah, because for OE producers of cars, for example, they have an obligation that the tire they are using for their cars might not be older than, I don't know, 20 weeks or something. So they have an urge of automatically reading this uh, DOT imprint number, which is on the tire. Yeah, and as we saw for, for looking of the presence of the DOT, it's just the next step uh, to, to get the uh, information of reading actually the number. So this would be something like here, 0716 means the tire has been produ uh, produced in 2016 in the uh, July. Yeah? And what we did, we gathered uh, a lot of image data from our customer where we did the DOT inspection and made some manual labeling of the, of the figures for dividing something like the, the numbers and training a, a network in the, in the background to divide the numbers. Yeah, you can't use a standard OCR recognition because the numbers, in, in the end, you have a black number on a black surface. So it's not like you see in uh, classical actual uh, uh, character recognition. We, we have to especially train a network to do so. But for the application, which is coming out as a demo application, it more or less works like we have seen before. The tire is first unrolled, then we look for the area where we find the imprint. And finally, we recognize the numbers on the tire. Yeah? So as we probably see in these images, the weak number itself, so it is 0716, but it's even worse visible here on the big screen than it is on the small screen. Yeah? But you see that scanning the, the tire with a line scan camera at that point is probably not the best way to do, yeah? because you have no, no contrast. So in, in the end, it's black on black, and the only difference you have is the height difference in the, in the, in the lining of the, of the imprint on the tire. So this comes to the idea that you enhance this by uh, using a different technique for acquiring the image with a laser triangulation. 
So you have a laser line, which is once again going over the tire, and then you scan the tire and in the end get a 3D image. And this is acquired more or less in the same way as it has been done with the pure line scan camera. But here, quite clearly for this tire with the 3D image, we can clearly see what the weak number is. So this would be a next step for enhancing the method of uh, reading the weak stamp number. Okay, another application which in the point of how the image is acquired is quite similar to what we have already seen is our qualization tire uh, label detection. So in the final finishing area of tires before they are shipped, labels are applied to the tire either to mark like uh, a gravity point on the tire or to identify special quality aspects of the tire. So for example, this tire obviously needs to have a yellow label, a red dot and uh, yeah, what they call a conicity mark. So this is implying whether the tire is to be built on the left or the right side of the tire, which is a P. Yeah, and the software is doing it that, that way that first of all, once again, we scan where the tire is positioned in the image. By this, we more or less again identify the area of the tire. And then we looked in the first place for colored structures. So where is something that is not black in the end? Yeah, and then we apply some internal logic to identify the structures. So the main source of identifying the structure is of course the color. So the yellow label is obviously yellow, yellow, the red point is obviously red. And the conicity mark here, the P, you see the high quality of the imprint. Yeah, it's a P, but it is in white. Yeah. So we have some information which are stored in the system in what we call a reference base. So you say something like, OK, a yellow label is yellow and has a width and a height information coming with it. So by this, it can be identified. And that comes to the idea that we now need to know how we can pick out the, the color. And that is something where like a classic AI method comes into the place. We have a fuzzy rule base here, which is enumerating the colors. Yeah, it's not like a classical if-then-else clause here. It is, uh, we are evaluating this with a fuzzy rule engine in the background and get a fuzzy similarity for each color. And the color that is matching most or the highest together with some other conditions that will be uh, evaluate in the end gives us the information whether it is green, red or yellow. I think I have to speed up a little bit here. And then, of course, we have a, a list which uh, stores all the information for each tires, which dots and uh, label marks we expect. OK, now to come back to our color stripe recognition, that is another application. Just imagine uh, just before your warehouse, all tires are passing by. And you would like to check if the tire that you expect on the conveyor is really the tire that is passing by. So if you deliver the tire, that you deliver the correct tire. So there's no misorder in your, uh, in your material tracking or something like. And the obvious thing that you can do is uh, recognize a tire by the color code that is applied to the tire itself. So here we see a tire that is, uh, what is it? Orange, yellow, red, and green. And that is something our software is once again doing by scanning over the tire. I hope you can see, yeah, you can see the little rectangle that is passing over the tire. And for each position of the rectangle, we do the same color analysis that we have seen for the label detection. So in the end, we have the same or a comparable rule base behind this, which once again, enumerating the colors which are applied by the customer. And by this, we can figure out which colors are on the tire. And then this, once again, is matched to a, a reference base telling that orange, yellow, green is article, yeah, I don't know, X, Y, Z here in that case. And then we can compare that to the expectation that the line is giving and say that's OK or that's not OK. As well, you will look for the quality of the color stripes, because if one is missing, you reject the tire as well. OK, now the final use case in that place is um, once again coming back to the check of the profile, which is another mean of checking whether a tire has been curved upside down. So what we have done, uh, I will talk a little later about how this is done internally, but we have a now a neural network which is checking the profile information of the tire and then gives a similarity mean to the expected profile. So this tire is OK, so the profile gives us a, a high similarity, which in the end is a low number. So we can say this tire is OK. Now we have a tire. I don't know whether this can be seen good here. So here we see the original profile. If I go to the other tire, you see the profile is switched. It's just turned around as well. But the color stripes are still OK. Yeah, and here we do the same comparison, and we see that the classificator in behind says, OK, 
the similarity is, is not as good as it was for the original tire, so we are able to reject this tire as uh, having the information that the profile is not okay. How is this done internally? This is done by an autoencoder network, so we extract the uh, relevant characteristics per profile type uh, and uh, let the, the, the neural network learn them how to do, and then afterwards the uh, neural network reconstructs by this information the, the tire image by itself. So it makes OK image to an OK image which looks quite similar to the original tire, and by this we have the possibility to compare the original image to the reconstructed image. So if the learned characteristics of the profile match to the current profile, the result will be quite similar and we can compare it and see that everything is OK. If it does not match, we have the information that the tire probably is not built correctly, it's not the correct profile, or has been turned upside down in the curing mold. So these are the examples I would like to give you today. Thank you for your attendance, and maybe we have questions, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, are there any questions? No questions again. Okay, so thanks again to all the speakers.